morning everybody uh, thanks for taking the time to come in check uh, check out what I've been working on I uh, just want to show off a couple things uh, that I've been working on uh, game detection wise and just application wide um, I also want to uh, go through how to actually install the nightly builds that I push uh, I have started pushing those again uh, most recently as of this morning there is a new nightly build up uh, so I'm going to take you guys through how to uh, get those and install them uh, so if you go to the input map or website and scroll down to the download section bar on the left uh, you'll see the nightly build option over here uh, so you go ahead and grab that and uh, go through the normal steps to download it um, with this new nightly build, you're also going to need VGEM 1.14 or newer. Uh, so you can go here and grab that. And this gives you a walkthrough of how to download the ins and install the newest VGEM bus drivers. Uh, you don't actually have to download anything per se. It's all done through the PowerShell as a packet, which is actually really awesome. So you run these commands that he has here in your Windows PowerShell and it'll automatically install the drivers for you. Um, and it seems a lot easier and a lot more user friendly and compatible than uh, the older method used to be. So uh, you go through this, install your VGEM, uh, probably going to need to reboot. And then once you have the nightly build downloaded from our website, uh, you're going to open up the zip file. Uh, and you're going to see two folders in there. Uh, one of them is a plugins folder. And what you need to do with that is that needs to go into your app data directory. So you pull up app data. And if you don't already have an input mapper folder, you create it. Uh, just like it's seen here uh, capital I, capital M, no space. Uh, and then you create another folder inside of that. Don't worry about the rest of these. They'll create automatically when you run the application. Uh, but you do need to have a plugins folder. And you can just drag this guy into this input mapper folder. And that'll create that folder for you. And that'll have all the plugins inside of it that input mapper is going to use. Um, you see I'm still working on the VJoy, so I don't actually have that deployed as part of the package. But once you have that plugins folder created, uh, go back to your zip, go into the release folder, and you'll see a file called input mapper icons.ttf. And what this is, is this is a font file. And it's not actually a font. What it is, is it has all of the icons that input mapper uses. And I use it, um, I put them in a font now, that way they're vectored and uh, they can change size without, you know, uh, the resolution looking funny because they're a vector format, not really an image format. So uh, it also allows me to change the colors through theming and all that stuff. So anyways, uh, you got to open that up, click install. Uh, if you already have it, it'll ask you to replace it. So yeah, go ahead, install it, close that out. And now you should be able to uh, copy this release folder somewhere. I already have it on my desktop and at that point it's good to run you don't actually install it because it's just a nightly build so it's released without an installer so you go ahead and fire it up and it should pop right up after that as long as all the uh, the, the folders are created properly and all that for the plugins alright so here we have the latest build that I've released of input mapper 1.7 it has everything that I've been showing and talking about so far. The game input API stuff uh, you guys are pretty familiar with. There's not really much new to talk about on that. Uh, right now I'm working on application overrides where you can actually tell it no that it's not detecting it correctly and what it should be. Um, that's still a work in progress so there's not much to show on that. Um, there is the new implementation of the VGEM uh, 1.14 uh, drivers and there is full implementation of the DualShock and the 360 virtual device now. So with that what we can do 
is we can turn, uh, I'm gonna connect my DualShock 4 device here. Uh, I'm using it via a Sony dongle. Uh, so I'll connect that up. And you see it popped up here into Input Mapper. Um, I have New Profile selected, which is this one. And I am going to send it through to a 360 device. So, you're up. I also have, let's see, sets that to default. So what that did right there is I also had a profile for a 360 controller and it saw the virtual 360 controller and created yet another one. So um, I don't have a way for Input Mapper yet to tell if an Xbox controller is a real one or a virtual one and if it is a virtual one to skip it. So you just have to do like I did right here and just make sure that you assign it accordingly um, and, you know, keep an eye on it. So anyways, uh, I got a DualShock 4 going through a nope. That's not what I wanted to do at all. Oh, what am I doing? There we go, that's what I wanted. All right, so uh, right now, output drivers, 360 device, so this 360 controller is controlled by the DualShock 4. Uh, I can't do picture in picture here to show you, but uh, yeah, that's, oops. That's the uh, controller there. I get all my axes and all that stuff, so. Um, Let's see, we can also do, uh, I'm going to shut this controller off. All right, there we go. Should disappear there in a second. Oh, oh, steam came up. Yeah, for some reason it's not taking away that controller once I disconnect it. Alright, so something might have changed there uh, in the Windows drivers that I'm going to have to take a look at. But anyways, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to connect my Xbox 360 controller here. And that should pop up as Player 2. Yep, there it is. Since I already have Player 1 as the virtual controller. So, uh, create another new profile here and I'm going to send this to a DualShock 4 device. Uh, I'm just going to keep it new profile 1. No need to change that. Uh, I'm going to assign new profile 1 to this controller. And you see over here, you see wireless controller popped up instantly as soon as I did that. Now I can tell uh, when a DualShock 4 is physical physical or a virtual one so that's why you don't see that pop up in here the uh, virtual uh, DualShock so uh, you can go in here and you can see now I'm using my 360 pad and I am getting DualShock 4 inputs so that's working as well uh, so we have DualShock 4 to 360 and 360 to DualShock 4 mapping uh, we also have uh, the ability to do some mapping overrides here. So source channel, I'm going to take my Xbox controller. Uh, let's I don't let's swap the left stick X to the right stick X, I guess. To DualShock 4, right stick X. Now we can mix if we have several different uh, things. Uh, let's do the left stick X and the right stick X are going to the right stick X and we can mix these here where it takes the average or use the highest one or uses the lowest one uh, there's different ways to mix it um, 
what I'll do is I guess I'll do, I'll do the highest one. That's probably the most commonly used, or will be the most commonly used. So if I use that now, if I go over to the DualShock 4 that we are mapping to, you see now when I'm moving my left stick X, it's controlling both of those axes because I have because um, I have it going from the left stick to the right stick. And if I do just the right stick, it controls just the right stick. So uh, if I wanted to do like if I wanted to uh, actually like make it so it only did uh, one of them at a time. Um, well, actually, that's what the mixing does. So you can see I'm moving the right stick, it changes. I'm moving the left stick, it changes. Uh, I can change the, the mixing on that so it does the average. Now, if I go back into this. takes both of those values together it's a little more smooth I don't know there's a lot of different things to play around with there uh, I haven't really figured it out much yet um, still toying with it that's going to be later on in development when I circle back around and get to some of that uh, so for now uh, there's only a little bit to play with there'll be more later on uh, see other things that are probably new uh, the template settings uh, this is a basic implementation so far you can go in here and play around with some of this uh, it doesn't look like the color picker is working properly yet uh, I also don't have image or gradient uh, created yet so but it looks like the sliders are working good so you can come in here and play around with stuff here uh, change change the way your input mapper looks um, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do those icons as a font uh, so if I can see let's see here we go tab foreground uh, you see how those actual icons change colors now with uh, my selection here uh, if it was just an image I wouldn't be able to do that um, and there's also alpha there so you can make some of this stuff transparent or whatever so uh, a lot of cool little things to play with so uh, that about does it at least for today's um, nightly build uh, I'm going to keep working on some stuff throughout the week and push them up by nightly build uh, when I determine that they're stable and probably not going to crash anybody's system. Uh, but overall, the new Input Mapper 1.7 seems to be a lot more stable. Uh, there are a couple bugs i got to figure out, but uh, it doesn't seem to crash uh, as much as the old Input Mapper 1.6 did, uh, especially when things go wrong. It kind of it kind of takes it in stride now and keeps going even if there is a pretty critical issue. So uh, that's one of the cool things that helps make it a lot more stable. That and you know using these external plugins and not having them built into Input Mapper so much uh, allows other developers to make sure they keep their stuff up to date. Um, like Benjamin's working on uh, VGem. Uh, so now that you know that's a separate plugin, as he updates that, it's easier to keep Input Mapper updated uh, to use these new versions. So uh, that's about it, guys. Um, I'll talk to you again next week, uh, unless I have something to report. Uh, but until then, have a good one.